This is a LibriVox recording. All lib recording. All LibriVox recordings are in the public domain. For more information or to volunteer, please visit LibriVox.org. Recording by Becky Crackle, Canal Winchester, Ohio. This is Romeo and Juliet by William Shakespeare. Act Four, Scene One, Friar Lawrence's Cell. Enter Friar Lawrence and Paris. Friar, on Thursday, sir, the time is very short. Paris, my father Capulet will have it so, and I am nothing slow to slack his haste. Friar, you say you do not know the lady's mind. Uneven is the course. I like it not. Paris, immoderately she weeps for Tybalt's death, and therefore have I little talked of love, for Venus smiles not in a house of tears. Now, sir, her father counts it dangerous that she do give her sorrow so much sway, and in his wisdom hastes our marriage to stop the inundation of her tears, which, too much minded by herself alone, may be put from her by society. Now do you know the reason of this haste? Friar, aside, I would I knew not why it should be slowed. Look, sir, here comes the lady toward my cell. Enter Juliet. Paris, happily met my lady and my wife juliet that may be sir when i may be a wife paris that may be must be love on thursday next juliet what must be shall be friar that's a certain text paris come you to make confession to this father juliet to answer that i should confess to you paris do not deny to him that you love me juliet I will confess to you that I love him. Paris, so will ye, I am sure, that you love me. Juliet, if I do so, it will be of more price being spoke behind your back than to your face. Paris, poor soul, thy face is much abused with tears. Juliet, the tears have got small victory by that, for it was bad enough before their spite. Paris, thou wrongst it more than tears with that report. Juliet, that is no slander, sir, which is a truth, and what I spake, I spake it to my face. Paris, thy face is mine, and thou hast slandered it. Juliet, it may be so, for it is not mine own. Are you at leisure, holy father, now, or shall I come to you at evening mass? Friar, my leisure serves me, pensive daughter, now. My lord, we must entreat the time alone. Paris, God shield I should disturb devotion. Juliet, on Thursday early will I rouse you. Till then, adieu, and keep this holy kiss. Exit. Juliet, oh, shut the door, and when thou hast done so, come weep with me, past hope, past cure, past help. Friar, ah, Juliet, I already know thy grief. It strains me past the compass of my wits. I hear thou must, and nothing may prorogue it, on Thursday next be married to this county. Juliet, tell me not, friar, that thou hearest of this, unless thou tell me how I may prevent it. If in thy wisdom thou canst give no help, do thou but call my resolution wise, and with this knife I'll help it presently. God joined my heart and Romeo's, thou our hands, and ere this hand by thee to Romeo's sealed shall be the label to another deed, or my true heart with treacherous revolt turn to another, this shall slay them both. Therefore, out of thy long experience time, give me some present counsel, or behold, twixt my extremes and me this bloody knife shall play the empire, arbitrating that which the commission of thy years and art could to no issue of true honor bring. Be not so long to speak. I long to die, if what thou speakest speak not of remedy. Friar, hold, daughter, I do spy a kind of hope, which craves as desperate an execution as that is desperate which we would prevent. If, rather than to marry County Paris, thou hast the strength of will to slay thyself, then it is likely thou wilt undertake a thing like death, to chide away this shame, that cops with death himself to scape from it, and if thou darest, I'll give thee remedy. Juliet, 
oh bid me leap rather than marry paris from off the battlements of yonder tower or walk in thievish ways or bid me lurk where serpents are chain me with roaring bears or shut me nightly in a charnel house or covered quite with dead men's rattling bones with reeky shanks and yellow chapless skulls or bid me go into a new-made grave and hide me with a dead man in his shroud things that to hear them told have made me tremble and i will do it without fear or doubt to live an unstained wife to my sweet love friar hold then go home be merry give consent to marry paris wednesday is to-morrow to-morrow night look that thou lie alone let not thy nurse lie with thee in thy chamber take thou this vial being then in bed and this distilled liquor drink thou off when presently through all thy veins shall run a cold and drowsy humour for no pulse shall keep his native progress but surcease no warmth no breath shall testify thou livest the roses in thy lips and cheeks shall fade to paley ashes thy eyes windows fall like death when he shuts up the day of life each part deprived of supple government shall stiff and stark and cold appear like death and in this borrowed likeness of shrunk death thou shalt continue two and forty hours and then awake as from a pleasant sleep now when the bridegroom in the morning comes to rouse thee from thy bed there art thou dead then as the manner of our country is in thy best robes uncovered on the bier thou shalt be borne to that same ancient vault where all the kindred of the capulets lie in the meantime against thou shalt awake shall romeo by my letters know our drift and hither shall he come and he and i will watch thy waking and that very night shall romeo bear thee hence to mantua and this shall free thee from this present shame if no inconstant toy nor womanish fear abate thy valour in the acting it juliet give me give me oh tell not me of fear friar hold get you gone be strong and prosperous in this resolve i'll send a friar with speed to mantua with my letters to thy lord juliet love give me strength and strength shall help afford farewell dear father exit end of scene one scene two hall in capulet's house enter capulet lady capulet nurse and servants capulet so many guests invite as here are writ exit first servant sirrah go hire me twenty cunning cooks second servant you shall have none ill sir for i'll try if they can lick their fingers capulet how canst thou try them so second servant marry sir tis an ill cook that cannot lick his own fingers therefore he that cannot lick his fingers goes not with me capulet go be gone exit second servant we shall be much unfurnished for this time what is my daughter gone to friar lawrence nurse i forsooth capulet well be may chance to do some good on her a peevish self-willed harlotry it is nurse see where she comes from shrift with merry look enter juliet capulet how now my head strong where have you been gadding juliet where i have learned me to repent the sin of disobedient opposition to you and your behests and am enjoined by holy lawrence to fall prostrate here to beg your pardon pardon i beseech you henceforward i am ever ruled by you capulet send for the county go tell him of this i'll have this knot knit up to-morrow morning juliet i met the youthful lord at lawrence's cell and gave him what becomed love i might not stepping o'er the bounds of modesty capulet why i am glad on it this is well stand up this is as it should be let me see the county ay marry go i say and fetch him hither now afore god this revered holy friar all our whole city is much bound to him juliet nurse will you go with me into my closet to help me sort such needful ornaments as you think fit to furnish me to-morrow lady capulet no not till thursday there's time enough capulet go nurse go with her we'll to church to-morrow exit juliet and nurse lady capulet we shall be short in our provision tis now near night capulet tush i will stir about and all things shall be well i warrant thee wife go thou to juliet help to deck up her i'll not to bed to-night let me alone 
I'll play the housewife for this once. What ho, they're all forth. Well, I will walk myself to County Paris to prepare him up against to-morrow. My heart is wondrous light since this same wayward girl is so reclaimed. Exit. End of scene two. Scene three, Juliet's chamber. Enter Juliet and nurse. Juliet. Ay, those attires are best, but gentle nurse, I pray thee leave me to myself to-night, for I have need of many orisons to move the heavens to smile upon my state, which well thou knowest is cross and full of sin. Enter Lady Capulet. Lady Capulet. What? Are you busy, ho? Need you my help? Juliet. No, madam. We have culled such necessaries as are behoveful for our state to-morrow. So please you, let me now be left alone, and let the nurse this night sit up with you, for I am sure you have your hands full all in this so sudden business. Lady Capulet. Good night. Get thee to bed and rest, for thou hast need. Exit Lady Capulet and nurse. Juliet. Farewell. God knows when we shall meet again. I have a faint cold fear thrills through my veins that almost freezes up the heat of life. I'll call them back again to comfort me. Nurse! Oh, what should she do here? My dismal scene I needs must act alone. Come, vile. What if this mixture do not work at all? Shall I be married, then, to-morrow morning? No, no, this shall forbid it. Lie thou there, laying down her dagger. What if it be a poison which the friar subtly hath ministered to have me dead, lest in this marriage he should be dishonored, because he married me before to Romeo? I fear it is, and yet methinks it should not, for he hath still been tried a holy man. I will not entertain so bad a thought. How if, when I am laid into the tomb, I wake before the time that Romeo come to redeem me? There's a fearful point. Shall I not then be stifled in the vault, to whose foul mouth no healthsome air breathes in, and there die strangled, ere my Romeo comes? Or if I live, is it not very like the horrible conceit of death and night, together with the terror of the place, as in a vault, an ancient receptacle, where for this many hundred years the bones of all my buried ancestors are packed, where bloody Tybalt, yet but green in earth, lies festering in his shroud, whereas they say at some hours in the night spirits resort. Alack, alack, is it not like that I, so early waking, what with loathsome smells and shrieks like mandrakes torn out of the earth, that living mortals, hearing them, run mad? Oh, if I wake, shall I not be distraught, environed with all these hideous fears, and madly play with my forefather's joints, and pluck the mangled Tybalt from his shroud, and in this rage with some great kinsman's bone as with a club dash out my desperate brains? Oh, look, methinks I see my cousin's ghost seeking out Romeo, that did spit his body upon a rapier's point. Stay, Tybalt, stay. Romeo, I come. This do I drink to thee, throws herself on the bed. End of scene three. Scene four. Hall in Capulet's house. Enter Lady Capulet and nurse. Lady Capulet, hold, take these keys and fetch more spices, nurse. Nurse, they call for dates and quinces in the pantry. Enter Capulet. Capulet, come, stir, 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 the second cock hath crowed, the curfew bell hath rung, tis three o'clock. Look to the baked meats, good Angelica, spare not for cost. Nurse, go, you cot queen, go, get you to bed. Faith, you'll be sick to-morrow for this night's watching. Capulet, no, not a whit. What, I have watched ere now all night for lesser cause, and ne'er been sick. Lady Capulet, I, you have been a mouse hunt in your time, but I will watch you from such watching now. Exit Lady Capulet and nurse. Capulet, a jealous hood, a jealous hood. Now, fellow, enter servants with spits, logs, and baskets. What's there? Servant one, things for the cook, sir, but I know not what. Capulet, make haste, make haste. Exit servant one. Sirrah, fetch dryer logs. Call Peter, he will show thee where they are. Second servant, I have a head, sir, that will find out logs and never trouble Peter for the matter. Exit. Capulet, mass and well said, a merry horse and ha, thou shalt be loggerhead. Good faith, tis day. The county will be here with music straight, for so he said he would. Ah, I hear him near. Music within. Nurse, wife, 
What ho? What nurse? I say. Re-enter nurse. Go, waken Juliet. Go and trim her up. I'll go and chat with Paris. Hi, make haste, make haste. The bridegroom, he has come already. Make haste, I say. Exit. End of scene four. Scene five, Juliet's chamber. Juliet on the bed. Enter nurse. Mistress! What mistress? Juliet! Fast, I warrant her, she. Why, lamb, why, lady, fie, you slug a bed. Why, love, I say. Madam, sweetheart, why, bride, what, not a word. You take your pennyworths now. Sleep for a week, for the next night, I warrant, the county Paris hath set up his rest, that you shall rest but little. God forgive me. Mary and amen, how sound is she asleep? I must needs wake her. Madam, 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 I let the county take you in your bed. He'll fright you up in faith, will it not be? What, dressed and in your clothes, and down again? I must needs wake you. Lady, 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 alas, alas, help, help, my lady's dead. Oh, well a day that ever I was born. Some aqua vitae, ho, my lord, my lady. Enter Lady Capulet. Lady Capulet, what noise is here? Nurse, oh, lamentable day. Lady Capulet, what is the matter? Nurse, look, look, oh, heavy day. Lady Capulet, oh, me, oh, me, my child, my only life. Revive, look up, or I will die with thee. Help, help, call help. Enter Capulet. Capulet, for shame, bring Juliet forth. Her lord is come. Nurse, she's dead, deceased, she's dead. Alack the day. Lady Capulet, alack the day. She's dead, she's dead, she's dead. Capulet, ha, let me see her. Out, alas, she's cold. Her blood is settled, and her joints are stiff. Life and these lips have long been separated. Death lies on her like an untimely frost upon the sweetest flower of all the field. A cursed time, unfortunate old man. Nurse, oh, lamentable day. Lady Capulet, oh, woeful time. Capulet, death that hath taken her hence to make me wail, ties up my tongue and will not let me speak. Enter Friar Lawrence and Paris with musicians. Friar. Come, is the bride ready to go to church? Capulet, ready to go, but never to return. O son, the night before thy wedding day hath death lain with thy bride. There she lies, flower as she was, deflowered by him. Death is my son-in-law, death is my heir. My daughter he hath wedded. I will die and leave him all, life, living, all his deaths. Paris, have I thought long to see this morning's face, and doth it give me such a sight as this? Lady Capulet, a cursed, unhappy, wretched, hateful day, most miserable hour that e'er time saw in lasting labor of his pilgrimage, but one, poor one, one poor and loving child, and one thing to rejoice and solace in, and cruel death hath catched it from my sight. Nurse, oh woe, oh woeful, woeful, woeful day! Most lamentable day, most woeful day, that ever, ever I did yet behold. O oh day, O oh day, O oh day, O oh hateful day, never was seen so black a day as this. O oh woeful day, O oh woeful day. Paris, beguiled, divorced, wronged, spited, slain, most detestable death by thee beguiled, by cruel, cruel thee quite overthrown. O oh love. O oh, life, not life, but love in death. Capulet, despised, distressed, hated, martyred, killed, uncomfortable time, why camest thou now to murder, murder our solemnity? O oh, child, O oh, child, my soul, and not my child, dead art thou, dead. Alack, my child is dead, and with my child my joys are buried. Friar, Peace, ho, for shame, confusion's cure lives not in these confusions. Heaven and yourself had part in this fair maid. Now heaven hath all, and all the better is it for the maid. Your part in her you could not keep from death, but heaven keeps his part in eternal life. The most you sought was her promotion, 
for twas your heaven she should be advanced and weep ye now seeing she is advanced above the clouds as high as heaven itself oh in this love you love your child so ill that you run mad seeing that she is well she's not well married that lives married long but she's best married that dies married young dry up your tears and stick your rosemary on this fair course and as the custom is in all her best array bear her to church for though fond nature bids us all lament yet nature's tears are reason's merriment Capulet, all things that we ordained festival turn from their office to black funeral our instruments to melancholy bells our wedding cheer to a sad burial feast our solemn hymns to sullen dirges change our bridal flowers serve for a buried course and all things change them to the contrary friar sir go you in and madam go with him and go sir paris every one prepare to follow this fair course under her grave the heavens do lower upon you for some ill move them no more by crossing their high will exit capulet lady capulet paris and friar first musician faith we may put up our pipes and be gone nurse honest good fellows ah put up put up for well you know this is a pitiful case exit first musician ay by my troth the case may be amended enter peter peter musicians o oh, musicians heart's ease heart's ease and you will have me live play heart's ease first musician why heart's ease peter o oh, musicians because my heart itself plays my heart is full of woe oh play me some merry dump to comfort me first musician not a dump we tis no time to play now peter you will not then first musician no peter i will then give it you soundly first musician what will you give us peter no money on my faith but the gleek i will give you the minstrel first musician then will i give you the serving creature peter then will i lay the serving creature's dagger on your pate i will carry no crotchets i'll ray you i'll fa you do you note me first musician and you ray us and fa us you note us second musician pray you put up your dagger and put out your wit peter then have at you with my wit i will dry beat you with an iron wit and put up my iron dagger answer me like men when griping grief the heart doth wound and doleful dumps the mind oppress then music with her silver sound why silver sound why music with her silver sound what say you simon catling first musician marry sir because silver hath a sweet sound peter pretty what say you you rebeck second musician i say silver sound because musicians sound for silver peter pretty too what say you james soundpost third musician faith i know not what to say peter oh i cry you mercy you are the singer i will say for you it is music with her silver sound because musicians have no gold for sounding then music with her silver sound with speedy help doth lend redress exit first musician what a pestilent knave is this same second musician hang him jack come will in here tarry for the mourners and stay for dinner exit end of scene five